good morning, everybody. I hope uh, everybody survived the absolute ridiculous cold weather of the past. Uh, how long was it, Leah? It feels like it's been cold for pretty much ever. <laughs> <laughs> no, <it's> been... <laughs> probably about. It, it's been more than a week, but I hope everybody is warm and safe and healthy and everything. And thanks for joining us this morning. Good morning, Claire. Thank you so much uh, for joining me again for a conversation this morning. Morning, Soma, and to everyone watching us. Brilliant. So, hey. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> so um, the reason why we thought uh, today is a good uh, a good day for conversation again is currently things in the law in, and in the way we practice and the way we do things are so different and so new and basically um, things change on a daily basis the moment you think okay cool we understand this this is how this works these days the next moment it's suddenly not how it works anymore so things are ever changing and we've decided as SSLR we want to be sure that we get the message out to everybody around how things currently work in court. Even if you, you're not an, a client from SSLR or, um, and you are sitting with an eviction or you are a landlord with, with rental properties or you are even just interested in getting into property investment, if you have the understanding and the knowledge of what the situation currently is it gives you a bit more uh, comfort in knowing how things are, are are working at this stage because the truth is uh, the reason why i always pull claire or someone else from the firm into a conversation is because i personally uh, don't really deal with a lot of matters actively where uh, claire is one of our associates uh, boots on the road she really knows what's happening she she attends to court um, on behalf of our clients and she really understands where we are with courts and, and with the, uh, the way the process are currently working. So Claire, thank you so much uh, for the time you take to have these conversations to help people and educate and really just get the message across that things are different but we, we're starting to sort of get the hang of it well at least for a week at a time and then the apple cart is all you know upside down again but at least we get it for a moment, but I know for you, especially currently, with the amount of evictions that, that you are working on, to take a, a half an hour out of your day to chat to me uh, is, is actually quite taxing. So thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's such a pleasure. And uh, yeah, I think you, I think our favorite saying, um, let's take it hour by hour. But I think pre-COVID used to be, let's take it day by day. But at this point, we are have to be constantly on our toes and um, ahead of the curve. Definitely. And I think especially now with the numbers uh, increasing in South Africa, I, I don't know about you, but I've stopped watching. In the old days, especially during like February, March, I still kept a very close eye on, uh, what's that website, uh, World Online, that, that mm. one with, with the COVID numbers. And honestly, since about halfway through lockdown, the extension of lockdown, so around the 15th of April, I just stopped looking because every time I do have a look at the numbers, I get such an incredible panic attack that it takes me about two hours to just get over the trauma. And then, uh, and then you start realizing, oh my goodness, this is actually, it's here now, that, that moment yeah. where you thought, yeah, South Africa is probably going to be spared. And remember the days when we all had these amazing um, series around here. But remember, it's nice and warm and we have the TB vaccination and all those things. Yeah. And we thought we're going to miss it. Um, I think it's clear that, that we're not missing it now. But the impact of that on us as attorneys and on our clients as property investors are profound. What are the the main things that you are currently seeing from from our clients from other practitioners your opponents things like that what are the main things that you are seeing at this stage that you would say oh my greatness that is uh, definitely very new and uh, something that that you didn't imagine as an attorney you would ever have to to deal with 
Yeah, I think, um, well, well, first of all, obviously, as uh, you know, being in this business, we're seeing a, a unprecedented rates of, of um, defaulting tenants. Um, one thing I probably ha have never experienced before is seeing such a, 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 a great emphasis on uh, settlement and settlement negotiations. Uh, before, I would be probably be more inclined to, to, to jump to court because that's just in my nature. And um, I've, I've had to learn to, to look at things differently um, because uh, where court was before already a taxing um, thing for, for someone to be faced with, um, bringing, um, you know, facing an, an eviction, even an unopposed eviction now is, is suddenly something that people just can't, can't afford to do. Um, being, be it the, the time, that, that it takes um, or the, the the cost to the to the landlord um, so so I think we're putting a greater emphasis on settlement definitely that's interesting tell me um, it the last time I, I knew about these things before COVID it, usually an unopposed eviction would take around six to eight weeks and in some courts like uh, Pretoria High Court, uh, slightly slower, more congested courts, um, yes. would say take around eight to 10 weeks, maybe 12 weeks on unopposed. And then opposed, we usually sit in the region of about three to four months. And again, in your more congested courts, six to eight months on an opposed eviction. Now I know I'm putting you super on the spot, so uh, sorry about that. But uh, what is the timelines that that uh, that a client can look at now, from commencement of the eviction proceedings to obtaining the order? We're not even going to talk about execution. We'll do that afterwards. But just from instruction to order, what's the time period we are currently looking at? You know, um, largely we're still trying to figure out what, what that is from start to finish. Um, but, and it, and, and it is largely dependent on which court we approach. So for instance, um, if we look at uh, Randburg Magistrates Courts, they seem to be functioning quite well. Um, and they're giving us uh, dates, uh, end of August, beginning of September. And when I say a date, I mean a court date on which the matter um, is to be heard, provided the, that the matter is unopposed. Other courts, I don't know if I should mention, but I think I should, Rotoport Magistrates Court, no one's doing anything. Um, magistrates are refusing to hear matters unless they're of an urgent nature, which, you know, that's, that's for me in contravention of, of what the Minister of Justice has, um, has, has said. Um, high, high Court um, is, we're looking at probably even, I would say, a, f a, two, a month longer um, for us to, to, um, to, 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 I would say, on the normal um, time periods that we gave of between eight to 10 weeks, I would say now you're looking at probably um, a three week process, a three month process, sorry. Sure, on unopposed. And the scary part is just to put your, your Randberg time timeline in context. <clears throat> Usually in Randberg, that was our quickest court. That was typically the court where you get a date, six weeks, you get your order and it's done. And yeah. now you like you just said that's one of the nicer courts at this stage, and we're looking at dates in September. So that's yeah. uh, that's that's pretty scary, but but going back to, to Rodeport Match Court, and I'm, I'm guessing that would be the case in many other courts. I spoke to uh, one of our colleagues, Marily, earlier about <clears throat> about a it's a it's a eviction she has in a small little unknown town. It's one of those that you didn't even know existed. But yeah. the, the situation with that um, was that the it, the correspondent we're using contacted the magistrate from that court and said. If we have an eviction, how do you run the eviction process? Because that's, you know, uh, how we normally do it. And the magistrate said, I'm just not hearing evictions. And yeah. now you're saying the same thing about Rudderport, and they're basing it on regulation 36 of the uh, level three lockdown regulations. But 
I think what's relevant to our viewers as well is the fact that Regulation 36 says prohibition of evictions. That's just the heading of the uh, of the thing. It specifically says that evictions are allowed in terms of PI and ESTA, the Prevention of Illegal Evictions Act and the Extension of Security of Tenure Act. So what I fail to understand is how magistrates are making basically their own rules and this might compel us to just approach the High Court, which luckily as SSLR we prefer to do in any event. Yes, yes. But it's pretty scary because it, say for instance you're an owner of a property in Porf Ade and the magistrate in Porf Ade um, it, it believes that you can't do an eviction. You're just going to sit tight until lockdown level two, which is, you know, who know when. Uh, where in actual fact, you have this remedy in law, you have this right in law to obtain the eviction order. Um, and I think it's pretty scary for me that people might not be aware of this. Absolutely. And I think it doesn't, you know, it doesn't just stop there. We're experiencing a bit of pushback from um, sheriffs, um, you know, even in, in the face of a court order um, that are refusing to, to execute, um, where, you know what I mean? So, um, there is, a, I think, a great deal of mis, oh, it's, a, it's a misconception um, currently that evictions are um, outright prohibited under this alert level. Yes, I think, and I think it's important to share this message over and over and over again. Um, uh, mo uh, most people are aware of the Property Law Alliance Wednesday webinars where we talk about this. Every single Wednesday, we have the question. I've been told by my estate agent, I just had a message from, yeah. um, from, an estate, from an estate agent that said the EIAB told them that evictions are prohibited. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, it's the EIAB. I mean, for crying out loud, at least I would expect the, the sheriffs, the courts, the magistrates, the EIAB to be aware of the fact that we are allowed to do evictions because the unintended consequence of this misperception is that we're sitting with more and more tenants that aren't paying rent, not just because they, they financially can't afford to pay, but because there's this message, don't stress, you won't be evicted. And then Absolutely. as soon as something turns into a future you problem, you probably won't attend to it right now, right? Yeah, you, 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 you have to. That's pretty scary. So t going back to the before times, the way back when, when uh, evictions was um, normal and the way we did cases was normal. Well, at least we thought at the time it was normal. Um, how did that work? I, I, I thought about this when, when I'm getting the type of questions I'm getting is typically in the, the sort of in the range of why does it take this long? Um, why can't we do this or that or the other? And I realized clients have never known how the court process works. I'll, I have a friend um, that recently, not recently, a while back, but, but relatively recently, um, did her own divorce. You know, those systems where you can do, you download, download the documents and you basically run your own court process. And she was shocked at how the court works. And the things that shocked her, that, Claire, you're going to laugh at this, because for us as attorneys, it's such an obvious normal thing. She was a little surprised when she got to the clerk of the court and the clerk sat back and said, no, she's not, she's on a break now. But she was there, but she's on a break. And exactly, but she's right there. And it was this weird thing for her, the way we, we do things, the way the system works. And I want to delve into that a little bit around how did it used to, how, how was it? And it was already not really working very well. I think we were just used to it. I think attorneys are just used to it. As a candidate attorney, you see this is the way it works. You go to court, you wait for hours. It's not weird for us to sit outside a magistrate's office for three hours while they are busy with who knows what. Um, and you wait. Attorneys are sometimes shockingly good at waiting um, because that's the way it works. Or you get to a clerk and the clerk is there, but they're not going to help you. And you can throw a tantrum of note. You can yeah. try and motivate them with crying or whatever. 
Uh, and the, uh, currently, it's even worse. So I think in the in the before COVID days, it was already quite something. Where currently, it's even worse because I remember when I was a candidate to turn. It's very interesting. I actually thought about my principal yesterday, and I thought I am pretty impressed that he never fired me. Um, <laughs> I was easily one of the more useless candidate attorneys that you've ever seen. I was. Um, I really didn't enjoy. I didn't enjoy being a candidate attorney. But I had to. I remember when I had to go to court to obtain default judgments. I didn't like to just file and wait. This is where I should have been fired because I didn't follow the normal process. I didn't. It it didn't make sense to me. And to, to be quite frank, to this day, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. But um, the problem that we are currently. Um, the problem that we are currently having is I could go to court and I could walk into the magistrate's office and I could sit there and cry and I could say, if I don't get this default judgment, I'm going to lose my job. Please help me. If that was the story in the old days, what is it like now? I can't <laughs> see that you're going to cry <laughs> with nobody seeing you. I mean, you're not going to be yeah. able to throw a tantrum if you can't get into court. Yeah, I kind of miss those days. I, I, I miss having the option to, to th throw a tantrum, if I can say that. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I think, so as you say, it was previously um, a, a frustrating experience also um, to people who might um, never have had to, to go to court. Um, it is surprising and um, it's something that you have to get used to. Um, I think uh, I've read somewhere that attorneys spend most of their time waiting in the hallways of court and, and that's pretty much, it's really not a glamorous um, side to what we do. Um, and uh, yeah, so in the old day, um, you could at least approach someone and um, usually, especially our messengers, they build a rapport with the court clerks and they've got a relationship and you kind of get to know the faces and um, you know, they, 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 they get things done. Um, but at least you had the option of standing in front of someone and um, gaining their respect. And I, I think then you could, you could get something done and, and move on with, with your day. So generally issuing, for instance, uh, an eviction application, generally that takes place um, immediately um, and it's simply when I say issuing I mean that the um, matter is assigned a case number and um, but without a case number we basically can't do anything um, so so that would generally take place immediately and um, you know filing of documents uh, that that pretty much all, all took place um, instantaneously um, so now the, the difference is that everything has to happen through case lines and we uh, are, have, they are very detailed and um, strict practice directives set out by the courts as to what email address needs to, um, you need to send to. And there's a prom I promise you there's about 20 different email addresses that you, that you, you know, you, you basically send a different request to. So whether you, for me, before we can even commence process, we need to have a matter created on case lines and um, to have that issued. Um, and it's, it's, um, there's three different email addresses that we, that we have to send to, where generally that would all just take place in, in a matter of a day. And, and you kind of reliant on someone behind a computer screen um, to hopefully read your email um, we do get read receipts, but unfortunately those don't mean, um, much these days. And, yeah, yeah. um, and that's, and then basically wait and see. And uh, the unfortunate thing is there have been m more often than not that we are waiting on, um, the, a matter to be issued, the, the creation of a case line for a date to, a, to be assigned to a matter and without which we are pretty much. I hate to use the word and everyone hates it, but our hands are tied in that, um, in that regard. Um, we have, I've, I've um, lost it once or twice. I've sent um, a, a messenger physically to court um, and, and we, get some, we get told simply to wait. 
they'll respond to our email in due course. Um, and, I, you know, I, I realized yesterday that um, it doesn't help us to send um, someone to court, especially now where we, you know, as Cyril said, we're heading into the eye storm. Um, we're contributing to the problem by actually sending someone to court unnecessarily, simply be to be told, wait, wait. Um, so, so that's that's pretty much the frustration. And tell me, how does your your clients react to it? I, I, I'll say from my side, usually when a client is really unhappy about the waiting time, I know about it because uh, I think that's how it works. If a client feels like now I've been I've been waiting for so long, I'm quite sure the the MD of the company will solve the problem. I haven't had emails like that from clients, so so clearly you guys are doing something spectacular in explaining to, to our clients how it works. I'm, I'm guessing all clients, once again, aren't experiencing the frustration or at least dealing with the frustrations in the same way because um, our clients seem to be very understanding. Um, and I think our, our empathy levels with our clients are pretty much through the roof. We've always been extremely empathetic with our clients in dealing with the frustrations in an eviction. But currently, how, how, how does your clients typically deal with these frustrations? Because I'm, I'm guessing that at, at least 75% of our clients are pretty much reliant on their rental income. And obviously, they're now going to have to wait for the eviction to be finalized before they can place a new tenant uh, who will pay rent. Uh, what, what's your experience with, with our clients at this stage? Yeah, I must say we have been very blessed with with clients who are extremely understanding and, um, you know, just, you know, actually just a pleasure to work with. Um, uh, we I try my best to explain and to keep them updated. And I think that 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 does speak volume um, as long as they know that um, that we're trying and that we're on it. Um, and, and we're basically experiencing these difficulties, which are unfortunately um, uh, case lines related, um, then, um, then we've, we've actually been, been very fortunate with clients who understand. Um, I think, um, you know, it's difficult because now, um, more, now more than ever, people are, our clients are um, needing a, a speedy eviction now more than ever. People are, um, like you say, a lot of people are reliant on the rental income and um, are now having to, 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 to pay bonds um, and associated costs on a property, having to incur legal fees where, I, I hate to say it, but the, the system is not working for them as, as it once did. Um, whereas before, you know, the system wasn't, was an uphill climb. Um, now it seems to be um, <laughs> even more impossible, um, which is again why I... I won't easily um, uh, throw someone through a court process if a matter can be settled out of court. Mm. I th and I think that's very wise. I think um, that's something that uh, I, I find quite often our clients are, uh, might be a little reluctant to talk about settlement and consider settlement because they have this perception of attorneys are these aggressive bulldog attorneys i've had that i've had emails from people saying like yeah but will you be like a bulldog in court and i'm like no we are not we are that is not how we roll that is not not what we do i think the perception of attorneys unfortunately um if you've watched suits too many times um it's slightly more relaxed people like uh, you and i and obviously the rest of the team um in the office people have a slightly different perception about attorneys and then they see especially the fact that the the majority of our team uh is a female team and with like the eviction guys <laughs> it's so it, it is probably a thing. slightly weird concept um and and to add to that we are usually not really the most aggressive people you see but it's not necessary simply because the law the law when it comes to evictions are so straightforward and it's on application. It's not even 
on action, so, so just for the benefit of our viewers, application means everything happens on affidavit. And the court only sees the papers when it becomes opposed. The only person talking in court are the two um, counsels, so either the, your attorney or your advocate, arguing against each other, but only on facts, only on the law. It's really not as spectacular as, as you would think. And today, um, it's even less spectacular, because at least in the, in the days where you guys attended to court, at least you all fully robed up and the, the advocates or, mm -hmm. and the attorneys are standing next to each other and there's a judge in front and the argument at least gives you a bit of a court feel. Currently, everything is happening over teams. So you can't interrupt each other. There's no such thing as you see on television or in the movies about lawyers like really going at each other and interrupting each other. That doesn't happen. You're on Teams or Zoom or whatever. <laughs> you, know what I mean? you can't even interrupt each other. And it's, it's such, a, such a strange concept without bringing any disrepute of any form to the courts or the way we're currently functioning. But I had a good smile at uh, your appearance earlier this week where one of, uh, one of the other advocates or attorneys accidentally forgot their camera on um, <laughs> during the court proceedings, but they weren't ready for court yet. They were still like busy making coffee in their little face <laughs> and not complete court attire. And these, I mean, these are things that's so out of the ordinary for us. Um, court is such a cold, very specific, uh, you know, you wear your robe, you wear your burp, you, it's like very professional, very cold and, and, and strict. And currently these things are happening and court times aren't the same. Um, I wanted to have uh, Nicholas Brody, uh, one of our other directors on, on this call this morning because he was in court yesterday and he was only heard last night at six. This was the motion court yesterday in South Kauteng. I mean, usually motion court, they just, just put everybody in, in uh, the, the sort of just enlighten them there. If you're in court, usually in South Kauteng, motion court, unopposed motions, what time are you done in court on a bad uh, day? On a bad day? Um, on a bad day, you'd be, be done by two. I'd say. Yeah, maybe three if it was really bad. But if you, yeah. I mean, those are the days where even you, and now I'm going to, you know, to say something very personal, but, but forgive me for that. If you rock up to the office with McDonald's or KFC, I know <laughs> you've had a very long, very bad day. Yeah. If you yeah. did come, in, I'm sorry for telling you secrets <laughs> now, but <laughs> these days, that's sort of normal. Nick, only finished in court last night at six, unopposed motion court. It's bizarre to say the very least. It's, it's strange, right? It's, it's crazy. Um, really, I've never seen anything like that. The, the, the one blessing, I suppose, is that um, when we say you're in court, um, you, you can kind of mute it and, 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 um, Carry just on keep, with, with. Just keep your you know, camera off. <laughs> keep your camera off, but also, I mean, you have to be awake. You, you can't miss yes. your shot. Um, uh, you can't be, you know what I mean. So, so you definitely have to to pay attention. Um, but I suppose again, just for for benefit of the viewers, when I say miss your shot, usually in high court, you matters are called per seniority. So this is another exciting thing with everyone's cameras off. You don't. I, I exactly just want to pause you. I just want to pause you. Uh, the fact that I understood what you said is a bit of a blessing as it is. What does it mean that they call by seniority? Oh, all right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so basically, um, so um, however many years someone has been practicing, so gen generally your SCs, your senior counsel, um, obviously have um, uh, practiced for many years and they've got um, much respect in the profession. Um, and so they are allowed to call their matters first, um, rightly so, they've earned that. Um, and juniors like myself will generally wait until uh, all the seniors have called their matters before I, I call them, call my matter. So oh. it's really, it's not, um, you kind of have to, 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 to gauge and see when is the best to call your matter without stepping on anyone's toes. <gasps> but you can't see them. So you, you don't can't see. Oh. Yeah. So it's a bit so, of a case. You, 
the guest. Unmute your mic and you hope for the best. Yeah. Oh, wow. That is so exciting. You know what? I, I wish we could uh, do one of those live on Facebook. I wonder if that's allowed. I'll, I'll look into it because it could actually be something super exciting to record just to show people how court currently works because majority of people have never been in court in their entire lives except for maybe here and there, a traffic fine, they forgot to pay, a divorce or whatever. But nobody, people usually don't go to court for fun. Um, that could actually be something cool. I'll, I'll look into that for us if we, if we might be allowed to do that. Because in fairness, it is a public forum. So it yeah, could be it pretty is. cool. It could be pretty cool. So just last, and then I'll let you go uh, so you, you can keep your clients' evictions running. But uh, just tell me quickly, you've had a matter in court this week. And uh, last week, you were successful with, with a few evictions. And um, in this week, you had a matter in court. Everything was supposed to be fine, but you ended up not even being heard. Just, just tell that story, because I must say, when you told me what happened there, I was so surprised. So I think for the benefit yeah. of everybody, just to understand what's happening currently, potentially okay, a good so, story. So I think what's important for everyone to realize is that Obviously, we are not rocking up to court in person. Everything is done on Microsoft Teams um, and the electronic um, f formats on which um, the, the papers are uploaded um, is through Case Lines. Um, Case Lines is, um, it, it was uh, introduced in the beginning of this year. Um, it was only set to go live now, um, but uh, obviously COVID forced that probably before the profession was ready for it um, for us to be the, the purpose was for the courts to go paperless which there is a lot you know a lot has to be said that it is important for the courts to go paperless not just for them and um, you know it's it's in, impractical impractical to like um, have these massive um, files um, that you sometimes see, especially that you know trial RAF type matters. Um, so, so that's how things are done. Everything is all the papers are uploaded um, on two case lines, and what happens is when we uh, set a matter down or when we finally enroll it for hearing, the registrar, God willing, someone um, sees our email and um, and uh, actually puts it on the roll. And, um, you know, overcoming that hurdle, they have to invite the judge to case lines. What happened in this instance was, um, for some or other reason, the registrar created a new matter for, for the case on case lines um, and invited the judge to that matter. The, the unbeknownst to us, um, the, the judge then basically got invited to a case on which there, were, there appeared to be no documents because we had, of course, uploaded it to the previous case, which had been created for the matter. So, um, um, and I'll be honest with you, it wasn't um, just a me problem. Um, it, I would say about 60 to 70% of counsel um, had matters removed um, for the same reason. I must say the judge was very sympathetic. Um, he, he, you know, he apologized. Um, however, the judge is also one person. Um, and has to prepare for court. Um, if the matters are not uploaded to case lines, uh, the judge cannot is simply, you know, m maybe if you ask very nicely, a judge will indulge you. Um, but, but generally, they, they've got to get through a role. Um, if not, you're going to sit with this uh, scenario where, where court only ends at six or seven o'clock at night. So judge has to go through papers. Um, and if the papers are, you know, according to him, there were no papers on, on the case lines, even though everything was uploaded um, by our offices on the 3rd of July. Um, and so, you know, the judge said, I'm sorry, take it up with the registrar. Um, and, uh, you know, everyone referred to it as teething problems associated with case lines. Um, but for me, um, it's a bit bigger than teething problems. Um, what, what I can say is that um, people are, when I'm saying people, legal practitioners are frustrated and um, have raised the matter, I would say, primarily with the uh, Attorneys Association. 
um, and the, you know through a channel that the Genesis Association can take it up with the the Judiciary Chief Justice um, and um, so that they can hopefully address some of these issues. I know that um, probably next week we can expect, um, I don't know, perhaps a, um, a notice or even in the form of directives um, as to how to escalate things when um, basically our requests are simply not being attended to um, and um, hopefully uh, we, can, we can smooth out some of the problems. Uh, another problem is simply the creation of a maths on case lines. Um, um, I think that, um, uh, well, they've mentioned um, that this will soon, attorneys will be able to, to do this themselves. We won't have to rely on a registrar to create a case for on case lines, um, which is great. Um, so, so we're just holding, holding out and, and trying to weather the storm as best we can um, for our client's sake. I think it's so important also to, to know that for a judge to quickly enroll a matter, I mean, if, even if the judge is nice enough to, to indulge you, it actually places your client at risk in a way. Because if the judge doesn't have proper time to peruse your documentation, because in fairness, let's talk just about an eviction application, just your founding affidavit, so that affidavit setting out the story for the judge to understand what's happening in front of him is easily a 12 page document and that's excluding all your annexures so now you have a 17 plus page lease agreement you have letters of demand and so you sit with a document of at least on a very simple straightforward rental cancellation eviction that with about 30 pages that the judge has to read. And if the judge can't read that, if he doesn't have time, there's a chance that you're gonna get a ruling that's not in your favor, just simply because the judge didn't have time to peruse everything. So it's, uh, it's in your client's best interest not to necessarily enforce that enrollment, but to give it time to allow the judge time to, to prepare for the matter as well. Yeah, I think so. Uh, that's, that's, um, that's a good point. I think it's so scary, but uh, so I, I know you have all sorts of tricks up your sleeve and I know everybody is trying their absolute best. I know recently you've been um, d enrolling matters on a date that you have and you sort of hope for the best. And <laughs> you have all these little tricks um, that, we, that we're pulling. Anything that you want to share around that? Yeah, I don't know if I'd call them tricks um, <laughs> other than just sheer desperation. But um, yeah, so so one of the problems we've been experiencing is um, not receiving any confirmation of court dates that we've requested. Um, on the one occasion, we'd requested a court date. Um, um, and despite follow-ups, I think two weeks went by, we didn't hear anything. And uh, eventually, uh, we were invited to um, uh, MS Teams link for the motion court. So the matter had actually found its way to the court trial without even receiving confirmation of the court date or us even having enrolled the matter. So that got me thinking and thought, well, um, given the way things are currently operating, if I'm not getting a response on my court date, I cannot sit, I can't sit with these papers. The biggest thing for our clients is to know that their papers have been served. Um, um, if needs be, we'll apply for a new court date, but I'm serving, I'm serving um, court documents without confirmation of provisional court dates um, in the hopes that we can actually um, secure those dates then for, for the actual matters to be heard, just just to basically get, get some more other process started. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's the way of, that's sort of how attorneys are going to function for the time being, right? Being creative, finding solutions, but uh, I think I think in all fairness, as much as things are very different, it's still moving. It's moving slower yes. than we would like to see, but it's moving and we're making progress and um, we're still getting the results for our clients that we really want. We would like to see it quicker, but it's still happening, um, not in the way we would like it to, but it's still, and I think it's important to know um for the industry as well that things are still rolling it's it's a slower roll but but we're still making progress and we're still still getting there but Claire, mm -hmm. I, I really really want to thank you guys I, I i do not envy any attorney 
um, at this stage, as, as much as I'm an attorney, I think I sit on the more pleasant side. I'm the one writing articles and, you know, doing all sorts of interviews and stuff. And I can say things um, about the way it, it, it currently is, but I, I'm not really facing um, these kind of challenges. But so really, I just want to say to all, all attorneys, especially the, the guys in our team, um, you guys are doing an absolutely brilliant job. And, and to our clients, I really, really, really want to say a heartfelt mm -hmm. thank you to our clients for your patience and for your trust in us and for trusting us when we're giving you the most bizarre reasons <laughs> for why your matters aren't being heard or why your matters have been removed from the role or, or postponed or whatever. Thank you for trusting us while it's almost, it feel, sometimes it feels like we're giving our clients reasons like the dog ate my homework a kind of reason yeah. and and i must say I'm, I'm really grateful that we have clients that even though it's bizarre bizarre reasons they trust us enough um to rely on us and and really um trust that we are doing the best because i think uh if it's one thing we can say about the ssl our team is you guys are doing your absolute best and grinding for hours and hours and hours i know your work days went from about nine to 10 hour days to good 15, 16, 17 hour days. And I, I, I really know our clients appreciate it. And uh, I, I really do appreciate it as well. So, so thank you so, so much for that. And on that note, is there anything that you want to add before we uh, let you get back to your evictions? Um, no, I think you summed it up nicely. So thank you clients. Um, you, you know, with our, obviously, we do this for you guys, um, uh, and hopefully it'll get it'll get better. As we say, every, day by day, things are opening up and becoming a bit easier. Um, yeah, so so I think we just got to keep at it. Brilliant! Thank you so much, Lee. Thank, thank you, thank you so much for everybody uh, watching and everybody that's still going to watch this. Uh, obviously, it's going to go onto our YouTube channel, uh, so I think people will still see this much later, but as soon as anything changes and as soon as the content year isn't relevant anymore, I promise you will know about it. Um, but thank you for watching and thank you uh, for your support and, and really thank you for each and every person um, that values the advice and the time uh, from SSLR and our attorneys. We really appreciate you and, and we really would like to continue adding value to you and your property investment journey. Have a lovely day, Fibber, and please stay safe and stay warm and wash your hands. And if you can, please, please, please stay indoors. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.